What's up, what's up, what's up, my people? What's up? It's your boy Dion Modam Muto. We back with another video today. We're watching What If Goku Was in MHA. We're going to be watching Season 2, Part 1, and Part 2 today. And uh, y'all let me know how y'all loving the story. Y'all love Season 1. And so we record for y'all come back with Season 2. You know what I'm saying? So we watching a lot of these stories. Of course, we're still watching the... Uh, DC, I think we about to start season two of that. That's what, or the next part of that. Um, and then you know we watch a lot of Dragon Ball stories, man. So let me know how y'all feel about these stories down below. Don't be afraid to comment. I like interacting with y'all. So you know what I'm saying? If you know, so let's get into it, man. You know, I ain't about waste y'all time. Let's go. At the end of the last video, it was revealed to Goku that he doesn't come from Earth. He's an alien of some kind. And Goku has been forced to live with that ever since the events of the last season transpired. Since the last season ended, Goku's origins have been kept secret from anyone who wasn't already notified. And Goku and Momo have gotten much closer, spending much more time together, as after Goku nearly lost Momo for good in the battle against Overhaul, he doesn't want to waste the time he has with her. Not only this, but Endeavor has also taken up the position of the number one hero, and gained a lot of respect after defeating a high-end Nomu at the cost of permanently scarring his body, and nearly losing his life. We now arrive at the time where Class 1A will battle against Class 1B. And Goku's hero uniform was mostly destroyed during his battle with Overhaul, and he's begun to design a new one, but for the time being, he has to wear his old training gear. And as a part of Goku's training, Aizawa tells Goku to stay in your base form for the entire time, as if you go into either of your transformation states, you wouldn't really get much of a challenge. And Goku agrees, so he says he won't transform, though a cocky blonde boy from Class 1B called Monoma says that they should let him use his full power. Class 1B will win anyway! Aizawa blatantly says that Goku is approximately five times as powerful as All Might was in his last battle in Goku's strongest form, so he's already more powerful than every pro hero. So no, he will not be allowed to use that power here. All the students look at Goku, shocked expressions on all of their faces, yeah, as they knew Goku was powerful, say, that but truth. this is surreal. Goku then cheerfully smiles, scratching the back of his head, and saying that he isn't the only strong one in their class. Goku then looking towards Midoriya, Todoroki, and Bakugo, and giving them a thumbs up. Shinso then- Hey Goku, look, I know you're trying to be nice to these niggas, I, look, I appreciate, I commend that, bro. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Them niggas are not on your level, Goku. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, nigga. You turn. Uh, you have a whole. No, you were stronger than them on, in your base form. Then you. Then you add Super Saiyan to that shit, nigga. Like, no, no. I, and I don't even want dick ride. But like, nigga, stop trying to. Then arrives to the surprise of all nice the ass, nigga. and Shinzo introduces himself before saying that he already faced some of them in the sports festival, but that doesn't make them friends. They are all still competing to be the best, and they are all just obstacles in the way of him achieving that goal. Everyone applauds Shinzo for his seriousness and determination, and Vlad King then begins to explain how the battles will work. They will be put into teams of four, with members of their specific class, and they will each compete one at a time. With Shinso being here, the number of students evens out to 42, so one of the matches will be a 5 on 5. Vlad King then explains the scenario. Their own hero agency is trying to capture a villainous organisation. They should consider their opponents to be evil criminals. Their team will win if they capture four competitors. In their team's base camp, they will find a prison. Once they put their enemies behind bars, that will count as a capture. Everyone then draws their lots and it is coincidentally the 5th battle, which will be a 5 on 5. Goku being the 5th member of Class 1A's team, and Shinzo being the 5th member of Class 1B's team. Okay. Deku is excited for his rematch against Shinzo. He still has questions about the vestiges of One for All, but right now, he's excited to see how Shinzo fights, and he wonders what new abilities he has learned. The first match then starts. Aizawa and Vlad's last words being, that if there's no decisive victory before the time is up, then the team with the most captures will win. With Class 1A's team not having Shinzo on their side this time around, their strategy has to change. Coda first has two birds scout the area, but before they have time to strike, they are surprise attacked by Shishida, who has a beast quirk, and Kosei, who has a solid air quirk. 
Kaminari is the only one left standing after their first attack, and he dashes towards the pair with lightning fast speed. But Kose jumps off of Shishida, and Shishida grabs Kaminari. But Kaminari simply smirks, saying nice grip there bro, before his body is engulfed by lightning, and Shishida is hit with a giant electric shock, throwing Kaminari away to stop the onslaught, but Shishida is still being electrocuted. And as Kose goes to try help his teammate, Froppy grabs him with her tongue okay, and Froppy? begins to run away. Shishida fights through the lightning and begins to chase after Froppy. Kaminari being surprised after how Shishida is and knocked out, but he knows he has to stop him now, but Kirishima and Koda get up. Kirishima is shouting that they've got this! As they both attempt to hit Shishida, but he reverts to his human form, dodging their punches before going back to his beast form, but before he grabs a pair, Kaminari dashes over to them, pushing them both out of the way, and Shishida grabs him, but not wanting a second round of electric shock, he quickly throws Kaminari, before he gets a chance to do anything, and he is sent flying in the direction of Ibarra. But Koda sends a hawk after him, which grabs Kaminari by the shirt before he goes too far. Okay. All of Class 1A has grown stronger due to the presence of Goku, and they will all prove how strong they have become. Froppy managed to capture Kosei, so in a panic, Shishida wants to even the odds, and quickly grabs Koda before jumping away to his camp, dodging all of the incoming attacks with his incredible sense of smell, and capturing Koda, meaning both teams are down one member. The members of Class 1B then begin to discuss their strategy, but Shishido gets nervous as he tells his teammates that he can smell three Froppies coming their way. Ibarra then says that she will get them, sending her vine-like hair in the direction Shishido tells her, and she then says she we got need one, more, we need to see more, dragging more class B, out 1B. and trapping him in a ball of hair in order for his we lightning to, to be more, ineffective. More class but as she gloats about their victory over him, Kirishima then jumps down, Landing a punch in Ibarra's like, head, in the show, which knocks him out cold, and, all, and he then jumps towards Shishida and begins to throw a flurry of punches in... towards him. Shishida was distracted by the capture of Kaminari, which gave Kirishima the perfect opening he needed. Rin is then about to run over to Ibarra, but, but Froppy grabs the, the unconscious body of Ibarra and quickly begins to jump around with her unconscious body. And as Rin is about to fire multiple attacks at her, the freed Kaminari hits him with one of his discs and fires a large electric shot man, straight at him, knocking him out as well. Froppy quickly grabs Rin as well, as she begins to run away, and it is now Kaminari and Kirishima versus Shishida. Kirishima is keeping Shishida at bay, while Kaminari runs around the giant beast, and she's every disc he she's has about to be wasted potential, before Kirishima bro. jumps back, and Kaminari hits the beast with a I'm giant Kaminari electric too. shock. Kirishima then running up to the shock Shishida, and with a powerful uppercut, the beast is finally put down. And okay. after they take him to their team's prison, Class 1A wins the first round, with only one of their members being captured. All the other matches remain relatively the same, until the fifth match, which with Goku there, there will be a significant difference. Goku knows he will be their enemy's main target, as the strongest on their team, so using Midoriya's strategy, he separates himself from them, and Midoriya does the same, by going in a separate direction. And then, Goku begins to try out something he has been practicing. Goku closes his eyes, and he begins to sense where everyone is. Goku has been trying to find more ways to use his energy abilities, and he discovered he could sense other people with it. Okay. So with him doing this, he senses where all of the enemies are. But as he is about to fly towards one of them, Goku's eyes widen as he sees giant black and blue tendrils in the sky. Goku begins to fly towards the origin point of the tendrils, as he sees Iroroka holding onto whips. Midoriya as they are in the sky, and more and more tendrils come out of Midoriya destroying the surrounding area as they form. Shinto then uses his quirk on Midoriya at the request of Uraraka, stopping the onslaught, and Midoriya sees a man in the vestige world, who tells him he is going to need to work even harder to control the new abilities he will unleash. The quirks of every previous One For All user are inside of him now, and he will have to control them all. The one he just displayed was his quirk, Black Whip, and One For All responds to his emotions, so if he doesn't control them, I love my hero, then they will bro. control him. Midori then wakes up as Some people hate it, but I love it, man. And as they land on the ground, Midori apologizes profusely. And as he is about to walk towards Uraraka, Monoma rushes to attack Midori from the behind. But Goku gets in the way and simply chops him on the neck, knocking him out. Goku then throws Midori up to Shinso in order for them to have their one-on-one -on -one fight. While Goku, along with the rest of the team, fight the other three members of Class 1B. Deku and Shinzi's fight plays out just like normal, and obviously with Goku helping the rest of Why their team, this is a complete on the same three team, for winning the match. With this, like in canon, Class 1A are the victors of the Class Clash. And I think this is a good place for us to end off this part. Place.
We know it takes place after the battle between All Might and All For One, since All Might can no longer use One For All. And it happens before the events of the last video, as Deku doesn't have Black Whip okay, yet. So you're not but doing I don't Hero know Rising. if it happens before or after the events of the Overhaul arc. So for the sake of this what if, we're going to have it take place after the events of the Overhaul arc. This video begins on Naboo Island. Class 1A has been sent there to run their very own hero agency. As there has recently been a surge of villain activity in Japan due to the number one hero uh, All Might being it. retired. I Some members like of Class 1A are currently on the beach, doing their hero duties, and Choji says that they've got a kid who's in trouble. They swam out past the rocks. Osui swims towards the kid, grabbing them with her tongue, before throwing them into the air, where Goku flies in, catching the kid, and flies back to the beach before putting the kid down, and telling him to be more careful. While this is happening, other students are off helping people in different areas of the island, and Jiro, Uraraka, and Deku begin the search for a missing the child, eventually coming across a boy who is missing, called Katsuma. But it turns out his sister who made the call to begin with was already there waiting with him, and she scolds Deku for taking over an hour to find him. The two children then walk off, Katsuma thanking Deku before being dragged away by his sister. He says there's no reason to thank him, and even though Jiro and Uraraka believe it is ridiculous that Deku had to apologise, Deku doesn't mind it, saying as long as Katsuma is safe, that's all that really matters. Aww. We head back to Class 1A's Hero Agency office, where a bunch of the islanders come in and give the students a giant feast to show their gratitude and appreciation for all the hard work they've been doing. But by the time everyone has finished cheering, Goku is already halfway through eating the entire feast, so the others quickly rush to grab food to stop Goku from eating all of it. After everyone has eaten, all the students go to sleep, leaving Bakugo to do the night watch as he has done nothing since they have arrived, and Goku and Midori are doing a small sparring match outside. By this point, All Might believed it was okay for Goku to know the secret of One for All, so All Might and Midoriya informed him about everything before their trip to Nabu Island, and told him that Bakugo also knows. Goku is trying to help Deku use high percentages of One for All, giving comparisons between it and his key, but then Bakugo walks out before telling Deku to hurry up with making one for all his own, so they can have a real fight, and he'll prove he will become the number one hero. Okay. Bakugo then looks to Goku, saying he better not think for a second that he will lose in their next fight either, and he will want Goku I'll to go stop all it. out. Goku slightly laughs, saying he looks forward to it. Kotsuma then arrives, telling the three that there is a villain, and Bakugo quickly grabs Kotsuma, telling the boy to tell him where they are. Goku, Deku, and Bakugo who is holding Kotsuma, then all rush towards the castle ruins, where after arriving, they see a giant mantis. Bakugo tries to fight it, using his stun grenade attack on it, but he then realises the creature has no shadow, so he stops trying to fight it. The mantis then hitting Bakugo, but Bakugo goes straight through it, as he then slammed into the ground, to stop the illusion. Maharo then says that's unfair, that thing was super scary and he just stood there, and Bakugo is furious at the child beginning to walk towards her menacingly as he shouts Man, at her. Right, calm but down, Goku Mark grabs up. onto the back of his collar, telling him that they are just kids. That's enough. The two kids then run away, Mahiro saying how mean Bakugo is, but Katsuma says that he still went there to fight the villain. The next day, Deku goes out to do some hero work, and Katsuma apologises to him for the night before, telling him to tell the other two heroes that were there he apologised as well and Deku and him then have a long talk, which is very insightful for both Deku and Bakugo who is listening the entire time. Shortly after, Kotsuma meets back up with his sister Mahiro, and then a ship crashes onto the island with four villains standing on top of it. The villains then split up, three of them creating distractions for the heroes while their boss goes after his only target, Kotsuma. Bakugo is in the hero okay. agency office Katsuma, when he gets a okay. call from Mahiro warning them of the villain's attack. But Bakugo doesn't I'm going believe to blind, okay. Deku I, I then not see this the movie, so but then the I don't know what's going on. Deku then asking Bakugo what she told him. On the beach, Goku stands face to face with one of the villains, telling Ojiro and Tokoyame to head back to the office and tell the others what is happening. He will deal with this guy before they return. The two don't argue with this, knowing how strong Goku is, so the two head off, while Goku cracks his knuckles, and the beast-like man standing across from him does the same. Goku senses around the entire island, sensing three other malicious presences, but he has to assume his friends are already aware of them, and are on their way to fight them. He just needs to focus on his own fight. The villain then says that he thinks introductions are in order for such a famous hero. He remembers seeing Goku in the news, so out of respect, 
he introduces himself as Chujuro Khan. Goku says that he appreciates the gesture, but he doesn't really care about his name. All he cares about is stopping him and his band of misfits. Goku then rushes towards Chojiro, landing a kick on the side of his head, but all it does is push his head a bit. Chojiro then grabbing oh, Goku's okay. neck and slamming strong, him to the strong. ground before picking him back up and throwing him back. Goku lands on his feet, saying that he can finally let loose a bit, powering up to the fullest in his base form as both Chojiro and Goku rush towards each other and trade blows. Goku is surprised. This guy is actually evenly matched with his base form in terms of pure strength. But luckily, Goku has techniques which Chojiro does not. The only problem is, Goku is deciding to not use them because he wants to test his raw strength against the villain and he wants to keep it as a fair fight. Some of Goku's classmates then arrive. Goku thinking his classmates can handle this guy and he tells them that he will go fight the boss while they deal with this guy. Goku's classmates saying alright as Goku then kicks Chojiro back before flying away. His battle with the other students of class 1A then commencing. Okay. While this is happening, the villain known as Nine is slowly walking towards Katsuma and Maharo, saying that he's going to take Katsuma's quirk, but Deku gets in the way, taking the kids a short distance away and telling them to run before he begins to battle against Nine, but Deku isn't strong enough to take him on alone. Bakugou then arrives, attempting to take on Nine as well, but the result is the same. And as Goku is flying in and is about to join the battle, Nine sees this and strikes Deku, Bakugo, and Goku with lightning. Deku and Bakugo are knocked out. Nine then falling to his knees as his illness overtakes him, and Kirika arrives. Goku stands in front of Katsume and Maharo, being injured by the lightning, but he shielded some of the attack with his key, so he is still in fighting condition. Okay. Goku knows fighting Goku. here isn't the best option though as it will put the lives of the two children, along with Deku and Bakugo at risk. But luckily, he doesn't have to, as the other students of class 1A arrive, creating a gust of smoke which blocks the villain's vision, as the heroes get a chance to escape, along with the kids. We now head to the siege of the castle ruins. One of the villains was already captured, so there are only three of them left, and the three remaining villains get split up by a preemptive strike from class 1A. Goku is with the group fighting Chojiro, as they realise they won't be able to match his pure strength without Goku. Todoroki freezes Chojiro into the lake, but after he breaks out, he activates his partial transformation, and Goku now realises his pure strength and base form won't be able to match him, so he'll have to use his techniques and work with the others. While this is happening, Nine is brushing through other students of class 1A, and Kiriko is winning her battle against Tokiyami, okay, I like this. but after Tokiyami gains some ground, Kirika gets enraged. I don't know these characters, so I'm not like, though, I can't really react. Tokiyami freaks out. I want to. Dark Shadow going berserk like these, and the, taking know, down Kirika. But Tokiyami is knocked out as well. Deku and Bakugo are now fighting against Nine while we head back to the battle against Chojiro. Ida kicks Chojiro with Recipro Burst, but it has no effect. Chojiro throwing him to the side like before blocking a punch uh, from Kirishima Tino. and throwing him into Her the name is. Goku then covers his hand in a ball of ki uppercutting Chojiro into the air, where Todoroki freezes him. But after Chojiro breaks out of the ice, he is paralyzed. Thanks to Osui's toxic mucus, he can't move. So to get out of this, Chojiro goes into his complete transformation. Chojiro then shoots a giant mouth beam, Goku firing a Kamehameha in response, and the two beams clash. But with Goku only being in his base form, his Kamehameha is slowly being pushed back. Todoroki then shoots a blast of fire alongside Goku. Goku and Todoroki slowly beginning to turn the tide of the struggle, but Chojiro then stomps on the ground, making Todoroki and Goku lose their balance as their attacks falter. And as Chojiro's attack is about to hit the pair, Kirishima jumps in the way, in his unbreakable state. Okay. As we then throws Ida into Chojiro, who lands a kick on his face, making him stop his mouth beam attack. And Todoroki then begins to trap Chojiro in ice, as Goku flies up and lifts his hands into the air attempting to make the biggest ball of ki he has ever made. But Goku accidentally begins to form a spirit bomb from the energy of the planet. He's Goku then throws the spirit bomb at Chojiro. Either using the last of his recipro burst to run around and grab all his classmates before getting away from the blast radius. Chojiro attempting to shoot another mouth beam at the spirit bomb, however there is no effect. And then the bomb makes contact, creating a large explosion which destroys half of the island. We head back to the battle between Deku, Bakugo, and Nine. Deku and Bakugo are both in the clutches of Nine, and Deku decides there's only one way they can defeat Nine. 
Deku's bloody and bruised hand reaches for Bakugo. Bakugo grabbing onto it, and after a large gust of smoke is cleared, Nine sees both Deku and Bakugo using One For All. Okay. Deku is using the fine lembers of One For All, while Bakugo is now the power's new wielder. Goku then lands behind them in his Akari form, saying that they can't have all the fun without him. And Bakugo says that Deku won't be able to achieve his dreams anymore. After this, he will be quirkless again. But Deku has accepted this, saying as long as Bakugo achieves it for him, then it will all be worth it. Deku and Bakugo then Detroit smash into the air, Goku looking in amazement at the power on display as the sky clears for them. Goku, Deku and Bakugo then all rush towards Nine, all of them dodging and smashing through Nine's attacks as finally Goku, Deku and Bakugo all land a consecutive final yes, kick on Nine with the remaining embers of One for All leaving Deku and with that the battle has come to an end. Sometime later, all the pro heroes arrive after they retrieve the distress signal from Momo's drone, and Deku admits to All Might that he gave back a go one for all. After Deku begs for forgiveness, he passes out once again. But it is then revealed that Deku has one for all once again, and Bakugo no longer has its power or the memory of using it. Some time oh, passes. Damn. And after what Class 1A the finish the rest damn. of their scheduled time to protect the island, Class 1A are on the ship as they are about to leave the island. Goku is excitedly talking to Momo about his fight with Chojuro and the new attack he used, while Deku and Bakugo say goodbye to Katsuma and Mahiro. Deku's last words to Katsuma being that Katsuma can become a hero. And this is where we're going to end off this part. Shout out to Sacred Sand. Yes, sir. I like that. I like that. I, you know, I couldn't really react to the part two because it was a movie. I had never seen that movie. But it looked, you know, it looked cool. It looked cool. It looked cool. So uh, I had to check it out one time, one time. Um, but I like the first part where I could understand with the uh, film version of Class 1B. So I can't wait to finish up this season two, man. They got like two parts left of season two. And then we go straight to season three, which is the last season. So. Oh yeah, we gonna be. Oh yeah, this story be done quick. Season three only got like four parts. I might fuck around on my off days and just watch the whole season three or something. Anyway, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let me know how, what you feel about the story down below, and uh, check out the last chapter right here. Check out another story right here, and I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.